this is where it gets fun. Talking about the trenches, you kind of touched on it last, you know, last segment with Chris Jones. And I will say that is going to be a fun matchup. Chris Jones against a rookie is always fun for Chiefs fans to watch. I, I will say that. And you make a great point about Vita Vea being a great person for him to go against. But Chris Jones is a different animal. Vita Vea has a lot of, and I'm not trying to take anything away from Vita Vea. He's a great player. But Chris Jones has, you know, the strength and the speed. He's not necessarily near as strong as Vita Vea. But his speed and his quickness uh, and his ability to hit you and, and you know get you out of the way really quick has been a problem for defenses. Yeah, and it's it's definitely going to be a challenge. You have you know a second year right guard, you have a rookie center, you have one of if not the best left tackle in the game in Tristan Works. You're not worried about that side too much. Yep. He's he's going to handle his business. Uh, Jealous of you, you on that. Yeah, you, you have. Uh, Luke Gedeke, who has skyrocketed once he switched from guard back to tackle, and, and he's over on the right side. It's the interior that you have to worry about. So that's that's why Chris Jones is, is such a huge concern. That's why Nadi is is such a huge concern is, is their ability to collapse that interior. And, and they're going to wreck running lanes, which is going to hurt, you know, what I've been saying this entire episode that the Bucks have to run the ball. If you can't run up the middle, you can't bounce everything outside. It's it's not going to work. So it's going to be paramount for this Bucks offensive line to be able to contain Jones and clear some running lanes. Uh, on the flip side, I do have to say, I know a lot of people hate the Chiefs. They they get a lot of, <laughs> and that's what happens when you win. When you win championships, yep. when you win games, you get a lot of hate. That's not why I hate the Chiefs. I hate the Chiefs because you guys got rid of Donovan Smith. How is Yaya Diaby and Kalaja Kansi supposed to destroy Patrick Mahomes' day when you guys don't have Donovan Smith on the field anymore? It, it upsets me. It, uh, we, we had to cover Donovan Smith for five years, and you guys only had him for a season, and quite frankly, I'm, I'm offended. You know, I don't think that they're going to have a problem because Wanya e. Morris has been basically a turnstile at left tackle. So I don't think that's going to be a problem for them. Uh, and, and that's why I was saying I'm, I'm jealous of Tristan Worse because Kansas City doesn't have a left tackle right now, at least the way that it's been going. Uh, Wanya e. Morris gave up a ton of uh, pressure and uh, several holding penalties last week against Max Crosby. And I know Crosby is one of the best DNs in football, so I get it to yeah. an extent, but you got to play better. And Kings of Sua Matia, I thought – played well enough to continue playing. I know he was struggling. I know he was having some rough times, but to me, you have to let a rookie try to play through it. And that's the only way he's going to get better. So maybe they're going to make a switch at some point. Uh, I don't think it's going to be this week. Uh, I, I'm not sure if they're going to make a switch back at this point, but I think that they're going to need to, but you look at the chief's offensive line and you really don't worry about the interior of the offensive line. That's definitely not the chief's issues. Uh, although they're going to be going up against Vita Vea, and that is going to be a fun matchup to watch because him against Creed Humphrey, Trey Smith, and Joe Tooney is going to be a lot of fun to watch. Trey Smith and Vita Vea going up against each other will be fun by itself uh, because both of those guys like to get after it. And you don't really worry about Jawan Taylor, but it's that left side of the line for the Chiefs that is the big concern. So you have to wonder how that's going to play out in this game and how that's going to change things. But when you look at the defensive line for the Chiefs, you know, you talk about Chris Jones, you talk about Derek Naughty, but it's the other two guys too. I mean, it's it's Mike Pinnell who's come in and, you know, he I know he only has two sacks on the year and that's not great, but he's fantastic against the run. He's been making run stuffs on a regular basis. You have Tershawn Wharton who's come in and played very well as well. He's getting pressure on the quarterback and he's helping, uh, you know, get pressure that way, but he's also helping in the running game. Their defensive line has played very well. George Goloftis is setting the edge well. They have a lot of different things going for them in this game when it comes to both the offensive side and the defensive side of the ball. And when you look at why the Chiefs continue to win each and every week, it's probably because their offensive line and their defensive line are really close to the top in the NFL on both sides of the ball. Uh, offensively, obviously you have a problem at left tackle, but defensively I think that entire defensive line is, is fantastic, uh, and that's what's gotten them there. But let's change up a little bit and let's talk about ways that they can win. So you tell me, how can your Bucks win this game? Well, run the ball effectively for sure, right out of the gate. Yeah, you know, I've I've talked about it. I'm not going to harp on it too much longer. You control the clock, you keep your your bad defense on the sideline, you have a chance. 
The the next one is defend Kelsey. We kind of touched on it a little bit. KJ Britt yeah. has been a massive liability in in pass coverage. The the middle of the field has been wide open. And when Kyle Pitts scores two touchdowns against you, there's a problem when you have to turn around <laughs> and face Travis Kelsey. Okay. So right. that is going to be an issue. You you cannot let Mahomes and Kelsey do what they did so well for so long. And and really that this could be the game that sparks Kelsey to return to four. Cause I know he, he hasn't been putting up the same numbers that he always has. He had a good week last week, but you know, generally his, his numbers have been a little bit lower. Yep. This, this could be a huge, huge game for him. You have to shut that down immediately. You have Antoine Winfield jr. You have Jordan Whitehead on the back end that can help out a little bit, but you cannot leave. KJ Brent on an island against Travis Kelsey. That is fun for no one. Uh, and then and then finally, make better decisions. And this is more for Baker Mayfield. Seven interceptions over the last three games. You had two against the Falcons that were terrible, terrible decisions that killed scoring drives. And when you lose by five points, those are things that stand out. He had two bad interceptions against the Ravens that, again, were in scoring range. One of them was in the end zone. You can't have that, especially against the Chiefs. You cannot give them extra possessions. You cannot give away your own possessions. You have to make better decisions. Take what they're giving you or throw the ball away to live and play another down. Yeah, those those are the big three for the Bucks this week. You know, I laugh because you talk about Kyle Pitts, and I laugh because <laughs> Kyle Pitts, I've had him on my fantasy team, I think, two of the three years that he's been in the NFL, and he does almost nothing almost every single week. And yeah. he is an insane talent, and they have been misusing him his entire career, and I just don't understand it. But I get why you said it, and I get the frame of reference. For me, it's simple. Stop the run. If you stop the run against this Bucks team and you try to make them beat you through the air, I think that's a win for Kansas City. And it's not necessarily because Baker isn't playing well, because he is, but it's because the weapons just aren't there to help him be as successful as they, I think they would need to be to be successful in this game and get a win. So to me, if you can stop the run, if you can keep it to where – I don't care if they get 75 yards on the ground, but I, I think that you're in a great spot if that's all they can get on the ground and you keep them under 100 yards, you keep them, in a, you know, uh, to that. And I think that that's going to be good for the for the Chiefs defense and this team. Secondly, and, and I say this just about every week, but until they do it, I, I think I'm going to continue to say it. Keep control of the ball. Don't turn the ball over. Win the turnover battle. Uh, I mean, that seems like it's so simple for football, but the reality is, and I talked about it earlier in the show, Patrick Mahomes keeps throwing picks. I'm not saying that they're his fault, but you can't keep giving the other team chances to win the game, especially when you start talking about making bad choices. Mahomes hasn't been doing that. But when you start throwing the ball and you turn the ball over and you're getting bad luck going against you, which is what's happened the past couple of games for him, if those happen in short fields, you put your defense in a huge bind. And that's a big problem. And I think that if Kansas City can avoid that and make the Bucs have to go 50, 60, 70 yards every single time they try to score, that's a, that's a big win for this team as well. Number three for me is get DeAndre Hopkins going in this game. And it doesn't necessarily mean that he has to have a 10 win or a 10 catch game or even 10 targets. But what it does mean is get him more acclimated to the offense, get him at least five, six, seven targets in this game. Get him the ball in different areas and use him how he is best being used. Uh, use him in the red zone. Use him to get you third down conversions. Just continue to get him more involved in this offense because while we're talking about this Bucks game, continuing to get him involved is going to be paramount for the Chiefs here in a couple of weeks when they play the Bills because they absolutely have to have another receiver outside of what they have on the roster right now. Uh, to step in and Hopkins can be that guy, but he has to be involved in the offense and they have to continue to keep pushing in the ball. Yeah. And, and, you know, Hopkins, I think the, the longer the season goes on, the bigger impact he's going to make. Yeah. And, and you bring up the bills and you take a look at, at Amari Cooper there. He hasn't been hugely involved yet. And that's going to come with time. But once Hopkins gets going, man, this, I, I think that could really be a turning point for this chiefs offense that, has not been ex as explosive as as we've come to expect and, and as we've come to know from the Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes era of Kansas City football. But, yeah, it's it's going to be an interesting game for sure 
on Monday night. You know, the the Bucks are they're a gritty, you know, football team and and you know, there's a lot of confidence in that locker room, especially among the offensive linemen. They feel they can still move the ball. They feel they can still make plays. They feel they still have playmakers on the offense even without Mike and Chris and they're they're facing probably their toughest test of the year in Arrowhead against this defense. It's it's going to be it's going to be a fun one. Well, they're going to be facing a raucous crowd as well. I'm sure Airhead is going to be rocking. And, you know, you talk about DeAndre Hopkins uh, and the Chiefs not being an explosive offense. I don't think he's going to add explosion to this offense because he's not that player anymore. He doesn't have that kind of speed anymore. He's not going to be taking the top off the defense. But he can get you first downs. He can get you – he just has to get open, get you first downs. You don't need a ton of yak. If he just continues to get catches – and continues to give you first downs. You know, Worthy had three, I think, three targets on third down last week. I think he got one of them converted. You cannot continue to do that on a regular basis and beat good teams. Being able to get Hopkins involved in that, and now you have another guy that can complement Kelsey to an extent, and then hopefully you get Juju back. I'm not sure he's back this week, but maybe you get Juju back, and that gives you another guy that can help in uh, in that scenario. So I think that's a huge thing for this Chiefs team. Yeah, it's the reliability. It's mm-hmm. the reliability of of a veteran, probably a Hall of Famer in DeAndre Hopkins getting acclimated and then just becoming a bigger and bigger part each and every week.